Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, everybody. Guess what? Ask Me Another is headed down south. On September 13th, we'll be in Nashville at the War Memorial Auditorium with super special guest country singer Martina McBride. And on September 27th, we're in Dallas at the Majestic Theater. Tickets and info at amatickets.org. Hey, if you need a great way to listen to Ask Me Another before summer really ends, it's NPR One. NPR One is an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio. And it's full of news and podcasts, including Ask Me Another. So whenever you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it on your app store. It's N-P-R-O-N-E. Warning. The following content has been deemed inappropriate for the radio. It may also be inappropriate for children, offices, or sensitive grandparents. Please put on your headphones. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia, Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. We have a great show for you. Four brilliant contestants are backstage memorizing irrational numbers, waiting to play our nerdy games. But only one will become our big winner. And our special guests are comics Cameron Esposito and Craig Robinson. Now, Cameron and I both hate it when people refer to female comics as comedians. Right? Not only because it's outdated, it's totally insulting. We don't need a special word just because we're women that tell jokes. You know what else I don't like being called? I don't like being called a funny gal, a mouthy broad, a joking Jezebel, a girl Seinfeld, Lady CK, shoulder pant and skinny tie. I don't like wacky womb. I don't like chatty vulva. I don't like Dame Miller. I'm not into ha ha harlot or chuckle slut. It's comic, okay? That's the only word you need to use, comic. And if you'd like to book me for your show, please go to my website, humorousuterus.biz. <laughs> Let's get things started with our first two contestants. First up, Jamie Schraff. You worked in marketing for an insurance company, but you say it's nothing like death of a salesman. No, you know, we're really trying to break that... Uh... <laughs> Stereotype. Stereotype, especially as we try to recruit millennials who don't want to die selling oh. insurance. <laughs> so what makes uh, your insurance job not suicidal? You know what's so cool? We launched a sabbatical program. So we get 30 paid days off to pursue a passion. What? And, yeah. Um, every 10 years, you get to do that. <laughs> Your opponent is Evan Hammond, and you are currently a project manager for an artist. I don't really understand what that job is, Evan. How would you describe it? Barely glorified secretary. Okay, got it. (laughs) Yeah, it's like an assistant, but your client happens to be all artists. No, just one. Just one artist. That's enough, trust me. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Jamie and Evan, the first of you who win two of our games is going to move on to the final round at the end of the show. So we're going to go to your first challenge. Jamie, have you ever taken credit for something that wasn't yours? Yes, nobly, I will say. Um, (laughs) My uh, girlfriend was quite ill, and we were in an elevator together. There was a smell, and it didn't come from me, but I took credit for it because, you know, she was not at her best, and I was trying to help a sister out. I did not expect the positive story. (laughs) to come from that question. Yes, you are but a saint. How about you, Evan? Have you ever taken credit for something that wasn't yours? Yeah. <laughs> with enthusiasm. No. I, um, we had a bum roommate, and I wanted to convince all my friends that I was a trickster and help to get her out. So even though she had a real leak in her roof, in her ceiling, in her bedroom, I told friends that I was throwing ice cubes on the floor to convince her to get out. Okay, so you took credit for a leak? 
All right. Well, this is a trivia game called Dude Stole My Invention. So you know the old saying, behind every successful man, there is a woman who actually did the work but doesn't get any of the credit. So in this game, we're inspired by true stories of men who took credit for women's inventions or discoveries and wrote these accounts as if they appeared in a crime blotter. Okay? This game was actually my idea, so... <laughs> A long, slow the burn greatest, on that one. The greatest. <laughs> Just buzz in to guess the invention or discovery that we're talking about, and the winner will be one step closer to the final round at the end of the show. All right, here we go. Charles Darrow skulked past Go and collected millions in royalties for this board game that was actually designed by a Quaker named Elizabeth McGee. Jamie. Monopoly. Exactly, Monopoly. You're right. <laughs> Maggie's version uh, was called The Landlord's Game, and it was actually designed as a teaching tool to show how big business is bad. That was a good idea. Yeah. That explains why that game. Have you ever had fun playing that game? No. no always no. angry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No one ever leaves like, wow, after playing Monopoly, we made out. <laughs> yes. It's not a great date game. No. Terrible. Officials have learned that Photo 51, the key to this discovery, wasn't actually taken by science duo Watson and Crick. Rather, it was taken by Rosalind Franklin. The letters A, C, T, and G were strewn all over the crime scene. Evan. Uh, DNA. DNA, you got it. Mm, yeah. It's 1917, and a man named J.R. Oshai says he's designed something to make driving in the rain safer. One problem, Mary Anderson already invented this more than a decade earlier, but her patent lapsed because no one would buy it from her. Jamie. Windshield wipers. You are correct, exactly. <laughs> Police are investigating one Charles Anon, last seen stealing the design for a machine made by Margaret Knight that manufactures these flat-bottomed objects that you'll find at the grocery store checkout. Jamie. Ooh, that was an early buzz. Um, well, that was, that was the end of the question. <laughs> flat items at checkout flat, must... Flat-bottomed objects. You make the that rock and like world go song, round. but I think yeah. it's the basket. Uh, that's an excellent guess. It is not the basket. Yeah. I'm sorry. Evan, do you know what the answer is? Uh, bag, like bagging stations? I'm sorry. It is not bagging stations. <laughs> what we were looking for is... Paper bags. Paper bags. Uh, yeah. Oh, everybody's yeah. a little vaguely disappointed. I, I understand. <laughs> All right, this is your last clue. A domestic dispute was called in from an art studio. Officials found Margaret Keene arguing with her husband, who said he was the artist behind her paintings, featuring this exaggerated anatomical feature. Evan. Eyes. Yes, big eyes. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Puzzle girl Greg Pliska, how did our contestants do? We have a tie. Ooh. So I have a tiebreaker question for you. Buzz in after I'm finished and give us the correct answer and you'll be our winner. All right. Here's your question. Cecilia Payne's research established that stars are made of helium and what other element that's number one on the periodic table? Evan. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is correct. Congratulations, Evan. Well done. You're one step closer to moving on to our final round. All right, let's check in with our contestants. Jamie, so before you sold insurance, you were a singer on a cruise ship. I was. For how many years did you do that? Um, half of one. <laughs> So you loved it. <laughs> they don't let you stay there when you are um, expecting a child. So, you know, I... I oh, they didn't want a pregnant singer? The that is took so... her leave. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what, what kind of stuff did you sing? Cheesy, um, old Broadway standards and, like, sappy Barbara Streisand songs. Not the good ones, just the, the, the cruddy ones. <laughs> and, like, Gloria Estefan stuff. Whatever they needed, basically. So everything is a fond memory from oh, this you know. uh, time in your life. <laughs> 
Evan, you told us that you once, I don't understand this, you raced from New York to Boston to get a uh, violin bow that was being held by the Fish and Wildlife Services, is that right? Yeah, I used to work for an artist management agency for classical musicians, and so a violinist didn't file proper paperwork, and she brought a bow into the United States that had just a laundry list of parts of various endangered species. What? <laughs> like, like which ones? Um, like a lizard from Mexico and ivory and all kinds, mother of pearl from some kind of really rare oyster or something like that. It <laughs> yeah, is. okay. All right, Jamie, Evan, we have a guessing game for you called Gandhi or Jolie. I'm going to give you a quote, and you're going to tell me, was it said by Nobel Peace Prize nominee... Mahatma Gandhi, or was it said by Academy Award winner and star of Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, <laughs> Angelina Jolie? We're going to alternate back and forth so you don't need to buzz in. Evan, you won the last game, so if you win this, you are going to go to the final round. Jamie, you need to win this, or you'll be leaving us with a used DVD of the 2010 Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie film, The Tourist. <laughs> All right, here we go, Jamie, we'll start with you. I think we all want justice and equality, a chance for a life with meaning. Oh, please let that be Gandhi. I'm sorry, that was Jolie, oh. yeah, yeah. I know, she sounds deep, doesn't she? Evan, all through history, the ways of truth and love have always won. Gandhi. Yeah, that was Gandhi, yeah, exactly. I mean, he clearly died a long time ago, but uh, he did say that. <laughs> Jamie, I've been reckless, but I'm not a rebel without a cause. I gotta hold out for my man Gandhi. That was Jolie. Yeah. I know, yes. Gandhi did love James Dean, but that was Jolie. <laughs> Evan, you must not lose faith in humanity. I, this, this game has me questioning it. Does, it, it does, exactly. <laughs> That's the beauty of this game. Uh, Jolie, she surprised me so far. Sorry, that was Gandhi. Yeah, she, uh... All right, these are your last clues. Jamie, my mother was an earth mother. Oh, I love Gandhi. Come on, Gandhi. Love your mother. No, that was Jolie. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Evan, I kind of wanted to be a vampire. Think... Carefully. Uh, Jolie. <laughs> Gandhi did go through that phase, but Jolie is the correct answer. That is a hard guessing game. Clearly, they both had so much wisdom to share. Puzzle guru Greg Pliska, how did our contestants do? Well, Jamie, it's been terrific having you with us, but I'm afraid to say that Evan is the winner of this game and has won two games and will move on to the final round at the end of the show. So thank you both. Coming up, we'll find out who will face off against Evan in our final round at the end of the show. And comic and actor Craig Robinson will join us. He's a hit with the ladies and will sing our version of a hit called Lady. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from NerdWallet. NerdWallet makes it fast and easy to find a credit card that works for you. With hundreds of different cards to choose from and offers ranging from cashback bonuses, travel rewards to low rates, and more. Their personalized tools let you compare more than 1,700 credit cards in seconds and apply instantly online. And their financial experts give straightforward, no-hype reviews to help you find a better card. So learn more at nerdwallet.com slash ask me. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Greg Pliska. And now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. 
Before the break, our contestant Evan won his way to the final round at the end of the show, and we're going to find out a little later who he will face off against. But now it's time to welcome our first special guest. You know him from The Office and the movie Hot Tub Time Machine. His new movie is Morris from America. Please welcome Craig Robinson. Hello, everyone. You are a stand-up comic, musician, actor. Your first comedic song that you wrote is called Can I Have Some Booty? Oh, okay. Well done. Now, here's my question. Why not all the booty? <laughs> Don't want to be greedy. Really? Yeah. Manners? It's all about manners? Well, just, you know, a little booty here and there is fine. As a musician, uh, your band with your brother, right? Nasty, yes, Chris Robb. Nasty Delicious. The Nasty Delicious, yes. Nasty Delicious appeared on The Office. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. did you decide to bring music into your comedy act? It was um, very early on. I'd gone up about three times uh, without any music. And um, I went up at this place called um, Heckler's Heaven. It was in Chicago. That's a real name of a club? Well, it wasn't the name of the club. It was called the Q Club at okay. the time. It was a pool hall, and in the back they had a room with a stage. Heckler's Heaven? Heckler's Heaven was, uh, they, you got eight minutes, right? Yeah. But after the first three minutes, they rang a bell, <laughs> and then three people in the audience had a ch rubber chicken, and three other people had, like, a scorecard. <laughs> and you, if you got all three chickens, you had to get off stage. Are you kidding me? Okay, so the this is... The first time I, I went up, I got two chickens, and, a, and I, I quit before I got my third. And then... Uh, <laughs> The following week, I came up with the keyboard, and no chickens. Yeah. I did like, get some booty, though. <laughs> just some. I just some. Teased, I teased. I didn't. And you could win 200 bucks. Did you ever win 200 bucks? Yeah. Yeah. I won it a couple of times. Nice. Yeah. I think I even won it when it went down to 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a place where the prize decreases over time. <laughs> Uh, now, I know also before you became a stand-up, you uh, taught K through 8 in the... Uh, K through 8 music. Music. <laughs> yes. In Chicago. Uh, yeah. In Chicago and Indiana. So how does your roughest, uh, meanest stand-up crowd at Heckler's Heaven compare to some uh, one day as a teacher? It was rough, but it was uh, once you, you know, break through... Sometimes you get those breakthroughs, and it's, it's nothing like that. And the kids still write me on the social media or whatever. So, you know, Mr. Robinson, we're so inspired by you. We're still, you know, praying for your stuff. And, and I'll just write them back, um, hey, I'm not your teacher anymore. Please stop contacting me. <laughs> <laughs> You're still teaching them lessons. You're still teaching them right, lessons. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you were a funny teacher. Yeah, but I, my, when I, I was upset, I was at my most effective. <laughs> <laughs> when I would get, get upset, they, they, and then they knew not to mess around. But, but, yeah, for the most part, I was just like, I remember one kid said, hey, we need discipline. <laughs> Are you kidding? She called herself the cop. <laughs> she was the cop. Now, people know you from all of your comedic roles, but your new movie, Morris from America, uh, although you play a funny dad, you're also, it's also much more of a dramatic role. Yeah. The plot of the movie is uh, you play Morris's dad and you move to Germany uh, to set yeah, up. Yeah, we were, we're, it, it catches up with us in Germany. His, his, uh, his mother, my wife, is deceased. And it's just this cool relationship that they have. It's unlike any parental relationship I've seen on screen or in real life. And the part that I, I when I say I haven't seen a relationship like this, like the uh, Morris would, would curse at his father. Yeah. And, and, and his father's like, okay, let's take a minute, let's chill. You know, I would have been, you know, thrown down the stairs. You know, but it was like, but this kid, is, you know, it's like he knows he has him in this foreign country and he knows he's got to, he needs him to grow up because I got to go make paper for us and all this other stuff. Were you friends with your uh, folks? No. No, 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 neither was I. It was just not the way it was. My went. mother maybe more, but my father made it clear. He's like, I'm not his friend, I'm his father. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Now you are also about to host a game show called 
Karaoke Showdown. Yes. All right. So can you tell us what this is about? Yeah, it's, it's karaoke in a car. Yeah. James Corden esque. Yes. You could say, except for it's not celebrities, it's you know regular people, and they are winning prizes. Do they know they are going to be singing karaoke when they get in no, the car? No, they don't. It's okay. it's straight up like, boom, your car service is here. <laughs> can't say any other name of a car service. Right, so, right, exactly. And then it's me, and then they're like, oh, man. And it's like, oh, office. And then we get through that. And yep. then we go. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I said, well, you know, here's some games. and You got to, you know, finish the words or, or sing with mar marshmallows in your mouth or something. something. Okay, you know, 200 here, 500 here. It's, it's, it's silly. It's a lot of fun. Just the logistics of doing a game show where you are driving. I've always wondered, are you actually driving? Yes. Is that not dangerous? Yeah, very. <laughs> it, it is, but but we have uh, you know, there's a car in front of us, a car in back of us, and sometimes on the side, the camera car, and that, that makes sure we're very safe. So if you hit someone, you hit a car that is part of the crew. If we, yeah, well, not necessarily. <laughs> um, depends on you know if I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, would you be into helping us with an Ask Me Another Challenge? Absolutely. All right, Craig Robinson, everybody. <laughs> Let's meet our next two contestants. First up, L. Miller, you illustrate and paint greeting cards. That is correct. That's a job, huh? <laughs> Can you give me like a recent illustration that you have done, just so I get a sense of your style? Um, my wonderful boss came up with um, probably one of my favorite cards. It's uh, cherries and it says to the perfect pair, which I guess could go to a happy couple or somebody that recently got work done. So. <laughs> oh, very nice. Your opponent is Morgan Richardson. You work at the Apple Store. I do. And not just any Apple Store, the 24-hour Apple Store on Fifth Avenue. That's kind of like the famous one. It is. So who's in there at 4 a.m., by the way? Not me. Oh, ever. good. Good. <laughs> no, but uh, a lot of people take advantage of the 24-hour Genius Bar. So if you're having a fun night out and things go south and your phone ends up uh, with oh. a cracked screen. In the toilet, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. I never even thought of that. You could head right from the bar. Straight to the Apple to Store. To the Genius Bar. Very convenient. <laughs> Don't drunk shop at the Apple Store, though. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so remember, Ellen Morgan, the first of you who wins two of our games will move on to our final round at the end of the show. So let's go to your first game. It's a music parody game called One for the Ladies. Jonathan Colton. Yes. Some people say I'm a lady. Some do. <laughs> Tell us about this song. Well, we've rewritten the song Lady by Styx to be about famous people or things that start with the word lady. And to make things extra sensual, our special guest, Craig Robinson, is going to sing some of the clues with me. And the winner will be one step closer to moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Lady, you have wings made for flying. Can be orange or red. Black spots often dot your round body Touch me, you cute coccylonid Morgan Ladybug Ladybug is correct <laughs> Ready? Yeah Here we go <laughs> Lady from the moment I saw you Standing at the beaming maze You gave a whole speech in a meat dress So what? Uh, you were just born that way Morgan Lady Gaga That's right Greg, that is a silky voice. I think you could get all of the booty. All of it. <laughs> okay, ready? Lady, from the moment I met you Strutting your stuff on the street 
You said hello, hey Joe, etc. Not shy in your forward Creole. Morgan. Uh, lady of the night. That's a good guess, but that is not what we are looking for. L, do you know the answer? Uh, lady marmalade. Yeah, that's right. It was hard to fit "Voulez-vous coucher avec moi" in that lyric, <laughs> so we had to write around it. That's right. And that that lyric only fits in the one song. You can't fit it in any other. One. They did it one time, but it was sort of a miracle. Nobody's going to do it again. We'll see next. Next, I'm going to go an octave higher and see how that works out. All right. With the stick, okay. the actual stick. Oh, you're going to go an octave I'm, I'm, I'm going to try it. All right. For the, one, yeah. for, the, for the chorus. When, you, when for, we hit the chorus. Oh, maybe. that's chorus, too. Wow. It's, it's easy. Lady. Lady. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. All right, here we go. Lady. Of the strip mall, shoes shine through your doors. Sneakers made for running. Sports lady. Morgan. Lady Footlocker. That's right. Lady, turn you on when I'm lonely Sing me all your songs Graceland, when you sang with Paul Simon Harmony and South African charm L. Uh... Lady Blacksmith Mombazo? It's no. close no. enough. Very right? close. Yeah, yeah, we'll give it to you. Lady Smith Black Mombazo. Lady Smith no, Black Mombazo. I got a little nervous. That's all right. We're all a little nervous, Elle. I know. <laughs> You're doing great. Lady of the Hudson. Torch shines in your hand. Stoic, green and friendly, <laughs> symbolic lady. <laughs> Morgan. Lady Liberty? That's the one. <laughs> Ophira, how did our contestants do? It was a very close game and a fun game. Morgan, you are the winner of this round and are one step closer. To the final round. Thank you to our amazing special guest, Craig Robinson. Thank you. And enjoy him in his new movie as a star in Morris from America. Craig Robinson, everybody. Let's do a quick check-in with our contestants. Elle, uh, your bus once broke your finger? Yeah, not at the greeting card company, though. No, different. This is when you were working for the mob or... Right. Um, I actually worked for the California Conservation Corps, so it was a lot of moving a huge boulder from one side of a mountain to another side of a mountain. Oh, my God. And then my job was to get down and throw littler rocks underneath so it wouldn't come back. <laughs> So I threw a rock. My boss and I thought at the same time that that rock could go further. I thought with my hand, and he thought with his foot. And, and how's the finger now? Um, it's fine. It's a little crooked, but <laughs> nothing, nothing. Right. And the boss, uh, well, hopefully sent you a card. Felt awful. He did, actually. <laughs> he sent you a card? <laughs> well, he bought a card for me when we went to go get my finger x-rayed. Yeah. <laughs> and he looked at the card and went, this will be my next job. <laughs> Morgan, you also, in addition to working at the App Store, you um, stage, manage, and produce theater. I do, yeah. So uh, what kind of theater do you think we all need to see more of? I'm a big fan of, like, absurdist, existentialist theater. Sure you are. Of course. Of course I am. <laughs> um, so, like, a play that I would love to see is, like, UNESCO's Rhinoceros is one of my favorites. All right. I've never seen. I would love to see. 
<laughs> We've got a word game for you called Get the H Out of Here. In this game, we're going to be hinting at a two-word phrase. You're going to get the second word by removing the H from the first word. Now, for an example, let's go to our puzzle guru, Greg Pliska. All right, so Alan Morgan, if we said, Jim never throws out his disposable razors, I guess you could call him this. You would say that he is a shaver saver. Buzz in to answer, of course. Morgan, you won the last game, so if you win this, you're moving on to the final round. L, you need to win this, or you can never use the letter H again. <laughs> Here we go. I felt an electric jolt when I shuffled across the carpet in one of these cotton foot coverings. L. Shock sock? Exactly, shock sock, yes. Did you see the review of this restaurant's plates? They completely trashed it. Morgan. Is that a dish dis? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. There's a small hole in my bicuspid that makes a sound like a train whistle whenever I speak. Morgan. A tooth toot? Tooth toot is correct, yeah. <laughs> We've been through nine of these portable shelters already. If this one doesn't work, we're never going camping again. We'll have to make s'mores at home. Morgan. Tenth tent? Yes, tent tent! I know, that was a hard one. Audible gasps from the people in the I audience. Know. You're on your tent tent, they were thinking, stop camping. Stop That's camping. it, it's yeah. not for you. <laughs> Something's going wrong. All right. Slap that thing! L. Hit it? Hit it! Yeah! It's your last clue. I went hiking and noticed a rotund, blood-sucking parasite on my leg. Morgan. A thick tick. Thick tick is correct. <laughs> Woo. Puzzle guru Greg Pliska. Morgan, you are the winner of this game. And that means you've won two games and we'll be moving on to our final round. Al, thank you for being with us. It's settled. Our finalists are Evan and Morgan. They'll face off in our final round at the end of the show. And if you want to get the H out of the house and share your trivia knowledge, become a contestant. Go to amatickets.org and join our hour. Coming up, I'll talk to comic Cameron Esposito about her new show, Take My Wife, and I'll find out where she is taking her wife. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Chipotle. For 23 years, they've been committed to sourcing the best, most noble ingredients they can find, prepping them with care and cooking them using simple recipes without the use of artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. They spend hours marinating, seasoning, and pampering the ingredients to perfection. Whether they're hand chopping, hand slicing, hand dicing, or hand mashing, the ingredients at Chipotle get the royal treatment every day. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Greg Pliska. And here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thanks, Jonathan. It's time to welcome our next special guest. She's a comic who created and stars in the CISO show, Take My Wife. Please welcome Cameron Esposito. So Cameron, a lot of comedians uh, have a defining moment in their childhood that they go, you know, that is one of the reasons I became a comic. Now, I don't know what yours is, but can I offer that it might be that you would wear an eye patch as a kid for eight years? Yeah, so it wasn't really a moment. <laughs> eight years? As an entire childhood. <laughs> Yeah, I had, I had crossed eyes when I was a little kid. I've had a couple surgeries, and I had to wear an eye patch for eight years of my childhood. So just imagine a little sweetie 
Cami Esposito. She's got an eye patch. She's got a she's got a bowl cut. She's got glasses and braces. That's right, glasses on top an eye patch, <laughs> and also a coonskin cap. You know, just oh yeah. And then you know, I was Charlie Chaplin for three Halloweens. <laughs> But they don't make a child-sized cane, so just Charlie Chaplin with a full adult-sized cane. Oh. So imagine Charlie Chaplin, like a suit and the mustache, then a full-size cane you have to hold in the middle. It's like a real Hitler Moses. Um. When's the last time someone uh, has come up to you uh, knowing that you are a comic and, you know, tell you an anecdote and then they want to say, you got to put that in your act? Oh, my God. Do these people know about that this is a well, terrible uh, uh, thing? Let's educate them right now, because your show, Take Ooh, My Wife, is thing. about you and your wife are both stand-ups. It's somewhat autobiographical. Yeah, it? I have a real wife. Her name is Really Rhea Butcher. Yes. And in the show, there are two characters. Their names are Cameron Esposito and Rhea Butcher. <laughs> and they are two female comics that are also real wives. Real so wives. It was difficult pitching it, because they were like, we can't imagine this. <laughs> How does it work again? And the show follows these women actually kind of dealing with what it's like to be an up-and-coming comic, the good and the bad gigs. I loved it because I, I related to so much of it. But what are you hoping, like, the general audience takes away from it? Well, when you're a woman who does this job, the number one thing that happens to you is that you tell jokes and be hilarious and make a living. And the number two thing that happens to you that people ask you what it's like being a woman in comedy. Constantly. And I always say, well, what's it like being a woman in the whole world? Because... Scary and demoralizing and really hard. And also, like, we, there are more of us. Yeah. We are 51%, <laughs> but we are made to feel like we are a minority and we are oddballs. And so I think being a woman in comedy is like being a woman in any profession. Um, you have to listen to a lot of dick jokes. My point is... Right. <laughs> do you think they'll just bleep that? Or do you think they'll put a different public radio word in there? I just want to give you guys an alt, though, if you need it. Please. Penis. Great. <laughs> Why would you marry and be with a comic? Because uh, I want my life to be a living nightmare. <laughs> no, I will say, Rhea is the smartest, best person I know. She's an unbelievable comic. I have a 10-year head start on her in this field. She had a whole other career beforehand because she's much more interesting than I am, and she was a fine artist, and she was a skateboarder, and she was a graphic designer, and I was just a comic. Um, I couldn't help myself. I never thought I would end up with a comic because it's very competitive. Yeah. If we didn't think we were the best at doing this job, we wouldn't do this job. There's no point. you have to wake up every morning and be like, the world needs you, kid. <laughs> no one else is as good as you. Okay. You gotta tell these people <laughs> good things that they need to know. It's very, you're very similar to Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Who would want to be in an easy relationship? I want to be with somebody that's a little bit challenging, especially now that my marriage is legal. It's like, pfft, yeah. what am I going to spend the rest of my time fighting for? You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's like stressful to just be accepted. <laughs> Now, you were saying when you were pitching the show and getting ready for it to be something that was going to be on air, the executive was like, it's uh, two women that are together and they do stand-up. How does the show work? Because you say that often the lesbian characters get killed off. They're like the red shirts of Star Trek. Yeah, um, yeah. lesbian on your television show? Oh, she going to die. So why do you think that is? I think it is because historically writers' rooms have been dominated by straight people white men, and I think sometimes straight white men uh, can't think of another thing to do with a lesbian <laughs> besides have her kiss a woman for ratings. Usually how it goes is that there's like one cop and she has a husband and a baby and then there's a doctor and she meets that doctor like because after there was like a ferry accident or whatever and then <laughs> the doctor's like bringing somebody back to life then the cop like sees the doctor and is like oh my god like i'm feeling something for the first time and then the husband is over there with the baby and he's like by the way i'm leaving and then she's like oh no i'm a police officer raising a child alone and then the doctor's like well i don't know you but if you need any help i could come over and then those two mm -hmm. women spend several seasons uh figuring out if they know what to do with their bodies and then <laughs> they kiss each other one time right and an errant piece of shrapnel from that same ferry accident that's been orbiting the earth for six years pops through the window and gets them both. Actually, just gets the doctor. 
the cop has to live the rest of her life training her young son <laughs> to be the next generation of police. <laughs> but of course, you know that many types of things can happen to women because women are people. Yeah, well, I've heard. And even, even lesbians. Are people. Are people. Yes. So, like, they could go to the store or sometimes I get on a plane. Wow. <laughs> now, you actually said everything I do, uh, I do as a gay person. The quote I read was, if I'm ordering a bagel, I'm still a gay person ordering a bagel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember that quote, but now I'm laughing so hard in my brain thinking about the fact that I use bagel as, a, <laughs> bagel is as opposed to bagel dog and the psychology of that. Um, please get that. <laughs> but yeah, I think when you are in the majority viewpoint, um, your viewpoint is invisible, right? Because you're in the majority. People just don't know that you're talking about your sexuality constantly because we all talk about our sexuality constantly because we all talk about dating or we talk about not dating or we talk about relationships or we talk about breaking up. I talk about being gay in my act because there is no experience other than that in my life. Literally not even my eyes are straight. <laughs> All right, Cameron, how would you feel about playing a little Ask Me Another Challenge? I'm nervous about it. No, it's going to be great. Cameron Esposito, everybody. So, Cameron, we wrote a movie quiz for you. Oh, great. I love movies. Yes, we know, because uh, you had a podcast uh, where you talked about sci-fi and action movies. Wham, bam, pow. That's right. That was an amazing podcast that I only had to stop because I was too busy being famous. <laughs> I love an action film. What's the top one for you? Um, I love the Terminator series. I'm a really oh, yeah, big fan of yeah. all the Terminator movies because I, I love the evolution of the female character in that movie. I love Sarah Connor. She is a damsel in distress in the first movie. Then she becomes good at bed push-ups and then watch out. And I think that she's really amazing. Um, she also is a mother and a fighter because it turns out mothers can do that. We often pretend like mothers can't, but then we're ignoring the evidence of our own mothers, who are usually very tough. Right, right. But I also love in Terminator 2 the use of facial morphing technology that there before was only used in Michael Jackson's black and white video. Like, that movie is actually the moment that we went from practical effects to digital effects. Okay, so we are going to read you an excerpt from a dissatisfied Amazon.com customer movie review. Great. You just need to identify the film. That person is complaining about, we know that you've seen these because you have discussed many of them on your podcast oh, great. in the past. Now, the stakes are very high. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if you do well enough, we're going to send an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube to listener Charlotte Knopp from Minnesota. Oh, my gosh. So it's a pretty big deal. Oh, oh sure. Yeah, you can clap for that. Here we go. Why can I, the guy who knows very little about dinosaurs, figure out what that animal is and Chris Pratt, the raptor expert, can't? Well, yeah, I mean, this is Jurassic World, obviously. Yes, indeed it is. Because I'm not a maniac. <laughs> the one thing I would just say is like, yo, Bryce Dallas Howard, next time you being chased by a Pteranodon, <laughs> pop off them heels. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like the moment there's a dinosaur attack, well, first of all, let's imagine a world where I'm wearing heels. <laughs> I suppose in that world there would be dinosaurs. There might be a dinosaur attack. It's possible. <laughs> Boring, no plot movie with tons of blow up scenes. <laughs> blow up scenes. I don't even want to give it one star. Just a bunch of close ups of Charlie's Theron's face. Oh, the new Mad Max, which mm -hmm. is Fury Road. That's right. Um, yeah. You know what's amazing about Fury Road is that uh, Riley Keough is in this movie, and Riley Keough is a model, um, but also Riley Keough is Elvis's granddaughter. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's like a beautiful, beautiful woman that has his beautiful, beautiful boy face. She's one of those five models that are dressed in toilet paper? That's right. She's one of them Fifth Element gals. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> All right, this is your last one. Bradley Cooper and Sienna Miller are proud parents of a fake baby. Yeah, that's American Sniper. Um, so in that movie, the baby that they had booked didn't show up. First of all, I hope that they oh. had assumed that baby was going to get transportation. I hope there wasn't just a baby like, <laughs> I'm booked, but I don't know how to get there because I'm a baby. 
But the baby didn't show baby, up. Baby, baby's waiting for a bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby trying to hit Uber, but doesn't have full muscle control yet. Just Siri, call Uber. Current location. <laughs> But the baby didn't show up, so Clint Easton was like, here, take this baby. <laughs> and then they were like, okay, boss. And then they shot it. And what's weird about it is that I feel like they should have helped Bradley Cooper out by weighing it down with something or by telling him that babies have weight. Because <laughs> when he picks up this tiny plastic baby, he's just like, whoop. Like, it's like, it literally like floats out of his hands. <laughs> oh, I, maybe that baby got a better gig. Maybe yeah, you're baby. right. I bet that baby's doing some work. <laughs> baby got double scale. Oh, baby booked a pilot? <laughs> <laughs> well, not surprising, Cameron. You got all of them correct, and you and listener... Wow! 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 <laughs> Charlotte Knopp is also going to get an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube. Cameron's new show on CISO is called Take My Wife... One more time for Cameron Esposito. You guys are just the best. Thank you so much. Now it's time to crown our big winner. Let's bring back our finalists, Evan and Morgan. All right, puzzle guru Greg Pliska, take it away. Thank you, Ophira. Evan and Morgan, your final round is called Hail to the Chief. Every answer in this round contains the name of a U.S. president. We're playing this round like a penalty shootout. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner. And your prize will be an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube signed by Craig and Cameron, a Toonie signed by Cameron, and a set of stickers from Take My Wife. Now, we flipped a coin backstage, and Morgan is going first. In 1908, this company produced the first commercially successful upright vacuum cleaner. The Hoover. That is correct. Evan, it's a nickname for the elevated thyroid cartilage at the front of a man's neck. Adam's apple. That is correct, Evan. Morgan, children's building toy invented in the early 20th century. Lincoln Logs. That is correct. Evan, vehicle company that makes the F-150. Ford. Correct. Morgan, this cartoon cat loves lasagna as much as he hates Mondays. Garfield. Correct. Evan, the piece of foliage through which God commanded Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. <laughs> You've got three more seconds. No, I'm sorry. We were looking for the burning bush. Ah. Okay, Morgan. The University of Wisconsin Badgers play their home football games in this city. Madison. Madison is correct. Evan, this Midwest city hosts the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and hosted the 2016 Republican National Convention. Cleveland. That is correct. Okay, Morgan, this is your question. The name of this Central European dance style means Polish woman. Three more seconds. No, uh, the correct answer is polka. Get it? James Polk. Inside uh, the word. Yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> Evan, to poke a hole through something like an ear. Pierce. Correct. Morgan, a spinoff of All in the Family, this sitcom featured a couple who moved on up to the east side. The Washingtons. <laughs> no. <laughs> the other spinoff. The Jeffersons. Evan. In this 1998 film, Jim Carrey plays a man whose every waking moment is televised. Three the, more seconds. The Truman Game? No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. So close. The Truman Show is what we were looking for. Uh, Morgan. She played the sassy and cynical Miranda Hobbs on Sex and the City. Three more seconds. Oh, no. That would be Cynthia Nixon. No relation to the president. Evan. She plays Olivia Pope on Scandal. <laughs> Last name is Washington. 
You're gonna need a full name, Evan. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, only fair that way. Olivia Washington. No, I'm sorry. sorry. The correct answer is Carrie Washington. All right, so we have a tie. Here is your tiebreaker question. The songs Shake It Off and Blank Space appear on her best-selling album, 1989. That would be Evan. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is correct. Wow. Down to a tiebreaker. Both of you are equally amazing. Evan, you are our big winner. Enjoy your prize. our show thank you so much for playing for bonus games and stuff that's too hot for radio look us up on facebook and twitter and subscribe to our podcast on google play itunes and stitcher ask me another's puzzle guru is greg pliska hey my name anagrams the sparkle gig our house musician is jonathan colton thou joel the cannon our senior supervising producer is art chung hung chart our puzzles were written by eric feinstein david israel julia melfi jess miller and senior writer kyle beak Ask Me Others produced by Mike Katz of Travis Larchuk, Denny Shin, Ramel Wood, and our intern Ashlyn Hatch. Halt! I can shh. Along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Mike Cohn, and Tyler McAllister. Ask Me Others was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, the Bell House. Hot Teal Blue. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm her ripe begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another. Did you know that in any given year, there are more than 100,000 albums released? I mean, that's nearly 2,000 albums every week. We know it's impossible to keep up with that much music, so NPR's All Songs Considered is here to help. Each week, your host Bob Boylan and Robin Hilton find the best of the best songs for you to fall in love with, along with tips on how to break up with your favorite band. Subscribe to All Songs Considered now at npr.org slash podcasts. Next time on Ask Me Another, Ash vs. Evil Dead's Bruce Campbell explains why the latest sequel to the Evil Dead movies is coming out on television. And if you spend $200 million on an Evil Dead movie, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, with Bruce Campbell and his co-star Lucy Lawless on Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia.